Hello and welcome again to the Toolkit for Traders YouTube channel where we give you the tools for trading success. And in this video, we're going to hopefully see which is the best moving average. So in today's video, we're going to look at moving averages because not all moving averages are equal. Not all of them are as good as each other. And, you know, we want to know which are the best ones to use for our trading because we're trading in a difficult environment and there are slim margins, slim pickings for profit. So you have to be at the top of your game. You can't settle for the standard stuff um, just because that's what you've seen. You've got to anal analyze these things and understand which is the best. So we're going to start with why. Why are you using uh, moving averages? We're going to use a factual comparison of moving averages. So I'm going to show you the differences between moving averages. It's not based on some cherry picked um, portions of the charts to show you how they work or or I'm going to show you them uh, across each other in a sort of scientific controlled environment so you can see for yourself which moving averages you would like to use. And then I'm going to give you some hints and tips about what this means for the future of your trading. So let's move on. So the quote for this lesson is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And, you know, I feel like when I was writing this presentation, I was thinking about how the moving averages you see most people use on most YouTube channels and most books are the same old stuff that's been around for a long, long time. And it uh, feels like the education sphere is stuck with uh, old tricks and won't update itself with the newer stuff that's out there on the market. So the first thing we've got to do when we're looking at our moving averages is we've got to start with why. I think oftentimes people um, start with the moving averages. Um, they're looking for something they're looking for the end result of it, you know, what's the best moving average. But we've got to know what, what, why are we using the moving, moving average? What are we trying to get from it? So in order to use moving, moving averages effectively in our trading, we must first establish what are we trying to achieve? What do we want our moving average to do? So um, one reason why we might use moving averages is to smooth out choppy prices and filter out the noise. Uh, that is a common use of a moving average and is a very good one use, a very good use of a moving average. Um, but not all moving averages are this, are, you know, are the same at doing this or as good as each other at doing this. So if this is your goal, you've got to pick a certain kind of moving average. Uh, another reason you might use a moving average is to lag behind the price, deliberately lag it behind the price to give you an idea of current momentum. So if you're using a, mo a moving average that lags and then say the moving average is below the current price, then you know you've got upward momentum and vice versa for downward moment momentum. Um, having lag in your moving average in this case is somewhat beneficial. Um, so you might choose to have a different kind of moving average if you're using it to give you an idea of momentum rather than just filtering out the noise. Uh, and another reason you might use a moving average is you want something that can react quickly to changes in price uh, to give you early entries. Uh, that might be a reason you use it. So some moving averages react quicker than others. So again, why are you using a moving average, that specific moving average? Um, understand what you're trying to achieve by using it and that will help you select the best moving average. So let's start by looking at the moving averages against each other. So most of the moving averages shown in trading education are the two simplest. Most of what you will see are the simple moving average and the exponential moving average. But are they the best and are there new and better types? Let's see. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an experiment. Um, we're going to imagine a price curve. So we're looking here at a fictitious price curve. Obviously, you can see that this is not real because it's actually a square wave um, which has been programmed in. So we've got a nice square wave. We start at 1, we go up to 1.2, and then we drop down to 1. So obviously, this is not... This is a controlled environment. This is a laboratory method of looking at moving averages. Um, but this will help us to see, um, without the noise, how moving averages react to changes in price because that's important. You need to understand um, the theory behind your moving average 
what it will do so that you can select the right one. So we take our simple price curve, our square wave. So, you know, this could be Euro USD price. Um, imagine it, uh, Euro USD as your Euro USD price or any, any asset really. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a moving average to it. So we apply a simple moving average. Um, and as you can see, uh, a simple moving average um, in this gray line here, um, when the price shoots up, the simple moving average um, slowly reacts and gets closer and closer and closer. So um, this is how you'd expect it to react because a simple moving average is simply the sum of all the prices within that period divided by the number of prices in that period. So as the um, number of new prices comes in and the number of old prices moves out, this gets close to the new one. Um, and it lags by exactly half the period of that SMA. So what I should say um, as well for this experiment is that all the uh, moving averages here have a period of 50. Um, and so they all have a consistent period. So I've not changed the period of them to do that. So um, we carry on then with a exponential moving average. So as you can see with an exponential moving average, and this is an extremely popular moving average, um, and for the reason that it is a bit quicker. So you can see when the price shoots up, the exponential moving average moves faster, reacts to price faster. So you're getting a quicker response. And this is what gives you the earlier entries when using the exponential moving average. But what you can see that's interesting with an exponential moving average is that actually um, towards the end, um, later down the line, it's actually less accurate at reflecting um, current price than the simple moving average. So it is faster at the start, but it has a problem towards um, getting to it's slower to get to the actual price than the simple moving average, which I think is interesting. The exponential moving average um, just inflates the most recent price in your system, in your uh, cal in its calculation. It's very simplistic. There's nothing really that special about it. And as you can see, it is a little bit faster, so that might be useful. But again, we lose some accuracy further down the line with that, and that might give us false entries potentially. So let's move on. What else can we have a look at? So uh, we're going to use a more modern uh, moving average. And this one's often called the Alma moving average, um, invented by two people. One of them was called Arnaud Legault. Um, apologies if you're French and I pronounced that wrong, um, but I did my best. So you can see the Alma moving average in green here. Compared to the exponential moving average, it is significantly faster, especially compared to the simple moving average, much, much faster. And actually, something that's really impressive about the Alma moving average, it gets to the current price really accurately, very, very quickly. You know, these, these two standard moving averages you see everybody tell you to use, look how slow they are compared to the Alma moving average. The accuracy of that moving average, of course, reflected on the downside as well, is excellent. And the speed of it, um, is significant compared, you know, much, much better than your exponential moving average. So if you're looking for a fast moving average, maybe the Alma moving average is the one for you. Um, let's go on. So I've got two slides for that. Apologies. So uh, now we've got the zero lag moving average. I think some of you might have heard of this one. It has a cooler name than many of the other moving averages. So I think that makes it quite popular. And you can see why as well it might be quite popular because here it is in the light blue. And it when the price shoots up, it is rapid to keep up with it. So it's significantly faster in the early stages um, of getting to of staying with price as price makes a, a big move. So you can see that it moves up and then actually, but what's interesting about the zero lag moving average is it is a bit slower in its accuracy in the longer term as it gets towards that price. So um, there is a little bit of lag getting really accurate levels of price. So, you know, if you want speed, maybe zero lag is better than Alma, but if you want accuracy, maybe you would go with the Alma moving average and sacrifice a little bit of that speed. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So the next one, um, you can see the diagram's changed. Uh, we've got the whole moving average. The whole moving average, again, is quite a popular one um, and because it is fast and you can see here what it does. So you can see here it's in the kind of green, light, light green color. 
it moves up as price moves up it moves up it's somewhere between in terms of speed in the early time it's somewhere between alma and zero lag um, but then as you carry on and as because effectively uh, the whole moving average counts everything twice and then interpolates between them you have this overshoot um, as a result so this is this can be a problem if accuracy is your issue then the whole moving average um, has a serious a significant overshoot problem and you look at this you're going from one point from one to 1 1.2 and then you're overshooting by pro about 25 percent so it's not an insignificant overshoot you have to take that into account um, that's what the whole moving average is trying to get you there and um, faster invented by a guy called alan hull and you know that's it's trying to compensate the speed get your faster speed um than the the the, the simple moving average and exponential moving average but as a result as a sacrifice for that you are getting some inaccurate overshoot there and that can really trigger false entries um, in your system so be careful when using the whole moving average for for that kind of thing then we've got a the d cycler moving average from probably my favorite uh trade analyst out there a man called john ellers um absolutely brilliant and his d cycler moving average uses um it really uses the science from uh spectral analysis um analysis of signals in uh electronic engineering and electrical engineering and applies that to trading you can see here in pink the d cycler is fast it's you know ju it's just shy of the zero lag um but it but as a consequence of it's the way it's calculated um, similar to the whole moving average, it has an overshoot. It's not as significant, maybe 10 or 12%. Um, and as a result of a shorter overshoot, it's also got a longer time to get to current price. But again, it's a, it's a fast one. It's one of the fastest we've seen so far um, and certainly um, gets to the current price um, quite quickly. So the D cycler is a really good uh, moving average, in my opinion, as all of these newer ones are. So, but it's really about your purpose. What are you, what are you looking for? Are you looking for speed? Are you looking for accuracy? Or are you indeed looking for lag? So let's move on to the next one. So here we've got one um, called a low pass filter. Um, I'm guessing that most of you won't have heard of a low pass filter um, and the D cycler. A low pass filter, again, is by John Ellis and again uses... Um, S signal analysis you know for things like phone signals and um, audio signal processing um, it uses the same logic stat and applies it to trading signals and you can see here it is a fairly quick moving average um, on that period is somewhere in the region of the alma but it has this long overshoot um, as a result of the way it's calculated so to be aware of but again another another string to your bow here because you've got another moving average which is fast um, and quite mature quite well calculated using modern sig signal processing techniques rather than just simple maths um, to get there so you can see there we've got I think that's all of them i will just check on I've got another one ah, I do so we've got one more to show you the super smoother and um, some of you may have heard of this and this is the third one on this list by John Ellis the super smoother here you can see uh, in the dark blue, you know, is is about the same as the um, low pass filter, but it doesn't. The overshoot is really small, and that means it gets to an accurate price somewhere in the region of the whole moving average, um, but without the massive overshoot. So quite quite accurate there, and quite quick. Um, but another one for you to use and to compare. So you know, you have to figure out for yourself which one you think is the best. But you can see here now, in the cold light of day, all of the moving averages compared with each other. You know, there's no, I'm not cherry picked a market because I've created a market. I'm showing you how each of these moving averages respond. And now you can see for yourself, um, you know, just looking at this area here, which of those moving averages would you use in your system? What are you trying to achieve by using those moving averages? Because that's the real key um, to all of this is what are you trying to achieve um, by using that moving average um, and, and that's really the question to start asking yourself not just which is the best because that's not really a, a valid scientific question it's what are you trying to achieve speed accuracy lag or something else what are you trying to get from moving average 
So now you know, right? Now you've got that knowledge. You know that there's moving averages, and I haven't even showed you all of them out there. If you've got some moving average that you, you want to analyze, you want me to look at, um, throw it in the comments below. I'll see if I can take a look and put a video in the future to look at that moving average. But now you've got some knowledge on different moving averages and what they do. Are you going, are you going to carry on using the same moving averages that everybody else is using, the exponential and the simple moving average? I don't know. So you've got to ask yourself, what average are you going to use? You're going to use the simple moving average and the exponential moving average, the old and basic kind. Or could you use the Alma and zero lag moving average? Much faster than the previous two and highly accurate. They don't have any overshoot. So you, you don't have any inaccuracy in there and you get much faster results than simple and exponential. Or could you use the, one of the other four, the next four, the whole moving average, the decycler, low pass filter or the super smoother. Again, they're very fast, but they have some overshoot. In fact, some of them are faster than the Alba and the Zero Lag, but the sacrifice is you have a bit of overshoot. So what are you going to use? Which ones do you want to use? So now I just now you know this and you've seen what you can do with some moving averages. What what are you going to use? You know, you'll see people say, oh well, you know, SMA crossover, EMA crossover, using two of the same moving averages. What if you used a low pass filter and the whole moving average? Or you got your entries from uh, using a decycler, super fast entries using two decyclers, or from the changing gradient of a decycler. Um, Consider that most popular indicators use SMA and EMA. So you think about all the major indicators that you'll use. Many of them use an SMA and an EMA as part of their analysis. What if you had those indicators, but you put in the modern indicators into them? So what about an ALMA MACD? So a MACD normally uses either the exponential or the SMA. What if it used the ALMA? What if you had a stochastic where the um, signal line was averaged not by an EMA but by a low pass filter what if instead of using standard averaging techniques the median averaging techniques of Ichimoku what if you used zero lag in Ichimoku style how would that change your trading what if how would your systems would they get better would they get worse I think it's definitely worth investigating it's definitely worth finding out because these are the things that could give you an edge in the market these are the things which you could start to do um, could get you faster but more accurate entries. So faster entries, but without sacrificing false breakouts, without sacrificing um, whipsaws, because you're using accurate moving averages that are faster than the other ones. The possibilities with this really are endless, and I'm looking to explore many of these on this channel. So make sure that you subscribe, um, click on the bell so you get that, because I am in the process of developing um, these advanced versions of standard uh, indicators uh, for this channel and for my website which is toolkitfortraders.com which is 100% su free and you will be able to get them on there so go over there sign up so you get the emails when they come out and you'll get notified you'll be able to download them absolutely free um, nothing to pay at all so if you like the idea of these moving averages as well um, drop a comment in the in the comment field below um, let me know what you would like to see first what you would like me to develop first and I can put some focus into that and okay so if you like the video um, please encourage me say uh, well done by clicking the like button click subscribe so you don't miss the future content that's coming future indicators that I'm developing and as I said in the in the video, comment any questions, anything you'd like to see first. And until next time, stay safe.